that the surface temperature of Venus is 900 degrees. That's hotter than a Ooh. baker's oven. Lead would be molten at that temperature. And when it rains, it rains sulfuric acid. And oh. the pressure of the air is 100 times that of the Earth. It would crush you. In a shocking twist that has sent shockwaves through the scientific world, declassified photos from Venus by the Soviet Union have left scientists on the brink of panic. These images captured by the daring Soviet Union have uncovered a reality on Venus that challenges everything we thought we knew about our celestial neighbor. But what secrets do these photographs hold? Could they be a clue to the existence of life beyond Earth? Or do they unlock a new chapter in our understanding of the universe? Join us as we peel back the layers of secrecy, unearthing the truth behind these captivating images and confronting questions that challenge the boundaries of human knowledge. The Epic Contest of Space Supremacy Decades ago, a significant race into the cosmos commenced, casting our gaze back to the Cold War era that followed World War II, extending its reach into the 1980s. Amidst this historical backdrop, the undeniable space race unfolded between the superpowers of the United States and the Soviet Union. This was more than just a rivalry. It was a contest for supremacy across military, political, scientific, and technological domains. The realm of space exploration became a central arena for this competition, witnessing remarkable advancements in space technology. This era wasn't solely about conquering the mysteries of space, it was a theater of symbolism where these two mighty nations could proudly showcase their technological prowess and potential on the global stage. The Soviet Union, in particular, was eager to spotlight its capabilities in this realm. A pivotal moment occurred in 1957 with the launch of Sputnik, the world's inaugural artificial satellite. This event was nothing short of revolutionary, marking the dawn of a new age in space exploration. The humble satellite, emitting its distinctive beeping signal while orbiting the Earth, left an immense impact. It signified the inception of a new race, a race not merely toward the stars, but also for international prestige and recognition. The focus then shifted to Venus, our neighboring planet, similar in many ways to Earth in terms of size and composition. It was often referred to as Earth's sister planet. However, just as siblings differ, the question arose about how much Venus resembled Earth. Could it potentially serve as a second home for humanity beyond our world? These questions piqued the curiosity of scientists and the public alike, prompting the Soviet Union to embark on a quest for answers. Thus began the era of Venera missions, a series of Soviet spacecraft meticulously designed to explore Venus. These missions aimed to unravel the mysteries of Venus's atmosphere, surface, and overall conditions. Triumph in the toxic skies. It's worth noting that Venus was a popular target for multiple missions during this period. Yet exploring Venus was no walk in the park. The planet's conditions were incredibly harsh, with scorching temperatures capable of melting lead, clouds laden with sulfuric acid, and atmospheric pressure so intense it could flatten a human being. However, undeterred by these challenges, the Soviets pressed forward, ready to confront and overcome the obstacles that lay ahead. Embarking on their ambitious endeavor, the first mission in this venture was known as Venera 1, launched in 1961. However, the mission didn't go as planned. Instead of reaching Venus, Venera 1 passed by it at a significant distance of 62,000 miles. Despite this setback, the Soviet Union showed remarkable resilience. They regrouped swiftly and launched Venera 2 the following year. Unfortunately, like its predecessor, Venera 2 also failed to reach Venus. Yet, as the saying goes, the third time proved to be successful. Holding on to their optimism, the Soviet Union launched Venera 3 in 1965. This time, their efforts bore fruit. Although Venera 3 crash-landed on Venus and transmitted data for only a brief period due to Venus's harsh conditions, this experience marked a turning point. The Soviet Union recognized the need for more robust spacecraft and cutting-edge tools to extract substantial data from Venus. The redesigned spacecraft now featured detachable descent modules equipped with a variety of instruments such as barometers, radar altimeters, gas analyzers, and thermometers. This upgraded approach aimed to gather maximum data during the limited time the modules could survive on Venus's surface. Unearthing Soviet discoveries and declassified missions 
to uncover what the Soviets kept hidden regarding their Venus discoveries, delving into historical data, subsequent Venera missions, and declassified Soviet space program documents is necessary. The exploration didn't halt with Venera 3. The Soviet Union pressed forward with Venera 4. This mission marked a pivotal moment. Unlike its predecessors, Venera 4 not only reached Venus's surface but made groundbreaking discoveries. One such discovery was the abundance of carbon dioxide in Venus's atmosphere. This fact bears significance due to carbon dioxide's role as a greenhouse gas, responsible for trapping heat. With Venus's high concentration of carbon dioxide, its surface experiences scorching temperatures of up to 864 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than even Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun. This revelation played a crucial role in comprehending Venus's climate and geology. Moreover, drawing parallels between Earth and Venus, this discovery offers a glimpse into a potential future scenario if greenhouse gases continue accumulating in Earth's atmosphere. In this regard, Venus stands as a stark cautionary example of the dire consequences of unchecked greenhouse gas buildup. However, the revelations extended beyond the atmospheric composition. In addition to Venus having a lot of carbon dioxide in its atmosphere, the Venera 4 mission also found out that Venus doesn't have a magnetic field like Earth does. Our magnetic field acts like a shield against harmful stuff from the Sun. Without it, life as we know it wouldn't be possible. Because Venus doesn't have this kind of magnetic shield, it suggests that life as we understand it might not be able to exist there. This was a big deal in learning how magnetic fields on planets form and change. It also helped us figure out if other planets in our solar system and beyond could support life. So, with each mission and every piece of information collected, we got closer to understanding not only Venus, but also our own planet and the vast universe around us. These missions to Venus were more than just cool space travel and technology feats. They were like exciting journeys of discovering new things that made us smarter about the universe. Venera's 90-Minute Triumph Unfortunately, Venera 4's mission didn't last long. After gathering data for about an hour and a half, the tough conditions on Venus made the probe stop working. It sank into the planet's thick atmosphere, where the extreme heat and pressure wrecked it. But those 90 minutes weren't a waste at all. The data they sent back was super useful. It helped us learn so much about this mysterious planet. After the good start with Venera 4, two more spacecraft, Venera 5 and Venera 6, were sent to Venus in 1969. These new ones were built stronger and packed with fancy scientific tools to get even better info about Venus's atmosphere. Venera 5 was launched on January 5, 1969. It aimed to dive into Venus's atmosphere and get data during its fall. As Venera 5 went into Venus's atmosphere, it dropped a little box with cool scientific gadgets. This box sent back precious data for about 53 minutes while the probe floated down with a parachute. The box checked things like what gases were in Venus's atmosphere, how thick the air was at different heights, and the temperature and light in the atmosphere. Decoding Venus's Extreme Environment Venera 6 was sent to Venus just five days after Venera 5, on January 10, 1969. It had similar jobs like studying cosmic particles, measuring gases in the atmosphere, figuring out the air pressure, and checking the temperature. Venera 6 made its way into Venus's atmosphere on May 17, 1969, just one day after Venera 5. While it descended, it sent back data for 51 minutes. Even though one of its instruments didn't work right, it still gave us useful information about Venus's air at different pressures. Both Venera 5 and Venera 6 had smaller parachutes because Venus has a thick atmosphere. This helped the little boxes they carried to go deeper before their power ran out. All the information from these missions supported what Venera 4 found. It confirmed that Venus has super high temperatures, high air pressure, and a lot of carbon dioxide in its air. This made it pretty clear that Venus isn't a friendly place for the kind of life we know about. And then arrived the pivotal moments of Venera 7 and Venera 8. These two spacecraft were part of the Venera series, a set of missions aimed at investigating Venus. They shared critical findings that reached us here on Earth. Venera 7, launched back in August 1970, marked a groundbreaking milestone. It was the first spacecraft to softly land on another planet and relay data back to Earth. Designed to endure Venus's intense pressure and temperature conditions, the probe was equipped with various sensors to measure factors like temperature, pressure, and atmospheric density. It even had an accelerometer and radar altimeter. 
The journey to Venus took some time and required course adjustments during the flight. When it finally reached Venus in December of the same year, it had to navigate the planet's atmosphere. The entry was challenging. The lander remained attached to the bus initially to maintain a cooler temperature. After being ejected, its parachute opened but encountered issues, leading to a faster descent than planned. The lander eventually touched down at about 59 kilometers per hour. While it might seem like a mission setback, it wasn't entirely so. Although the probe went silent on impact, the recording tapes kept rolling. Weeks later, weak signals were discovered, revealing that Venera 7 had indeed landed on Venus, even if it had some challenges with its orientation. During its brief time on the surface, the probe managed to transmit data for around 20 minutes. It recorded a scorching surface temperature of approximately 887 degrees Fahrenheit and estimated pressure of roughly 1,300 psi. Venera 8 and beyond. Moving on to Venera 8, launched in 1972, this mission shared similarities but also key differences. Similarly designed to study Venus's atmosphere and surface, Venera 8 experienced a smoother landing this time. It was equipped with sensors to measure temperature, pressure, and light, along with an altimeter, gamma-ray spectrometer, gas analyzer, and radio transmitters. The journey to Venus took about 118 days, with adjustments made along the way. To prolong its surface life, the descent capsule was pre-chilled before entering the atmosphere. Aerobraking helped decrease its descent speed, and the parachute deployed at an altitude of 60 kilometers. During its descent, Venera 8 transmitted data, noting changes in illumination and wind speeds at different altitudes. The lander successfully touched down in a region called Vasilisa Regio in sunlight, approximately 500 kilometers from the morning terminator. It continued transmitting data for a little over 50 minutes before succumbing to the harsh conditions. Venera 8 confirmed the high temperature and pressure data gathered by Venera 7, measured the light levels suitable for surface photography, and made significant discoveries about Venus's cloud layers and atmosphere. Both Venera 7 and Venera 8 missions marked substantial progress in our exploration of Venus. Despite challenges, such as Venera 7's imperfect landing, the Soviets persisted, learning from failures to refine future missions. Thanks to Venera 8's data, scientists grasped that Venus's atmospheric pressure was a staggering 90 times that of Earth's at sea level. This sensor's functionality in such intense conditions was a significant feat. Furthermore, the probe's recording of light levels on Venus's surface hinted at the possibility of using cameras for visual data capture. This drive led to the subsequent Venera missions that continued to expand our understanding of Venus, culminating in capturing the planet's rugged terrain through cameras on Venera 9 to Venera 12 and advanced technology like radar-based imaging on Venera 15 and 16. Each mission turned a new page in the Book of Venus exploration, unveiling the planet's enigmatic landscapes and topography, even amidst challenges that some cameras faced due to the harsh environment. The result was a series of pioneering moments, including the transmission of the first-ever photographs from the surface of our solar system's second planet, the legacy and secrets of the Venera probes. Let's delve into the story of the Venera probes, those remarkable spacecraft that ventured into the depths of Venus, our neighboring planet. These probes, with their exhaustive explorations, found no traces of life on Venus, no oceans, no lakes, not even a single drop of water could be found in this barren realm. But here's the fascinating part. These probes did more than just search for life. They provided us with invaluable insights into the extreme environments of other planets, enriching our understanding of how different these celestial bodies can be from our Earth. Despite the absence of life, the probes revealed intriguing revelations. For instance, a remarkable achievement was made by Venera 13. It recorded the eerie sounds of Venus's winds, a first-time feat of capturing sound on a planet beyond our own. This marked a memorable moment in our journey of exploring outer space, the legacy of the Venera probes endures, inspiring new endeavors to comprehend our celestial neighbors. However, Venera 13 went beyond capturing alien sounds. Originally designed to function for only 45 minutes, the lander surpassed expectations and operated for an impressive 127 minutes on Venus's harsh surface. During this extended mission, it managed to send back vivid color photographs of the planet's stark and desolate terrain, unlike anything we had seen before. 
Venera 13 also ventured into Venus's soil, analyzing a sample. This was humanity's first ever analysis of another planet's soil composition. Through this exploration, we discovered elements like titanium and iron on Venus. It's truly remarkable that we could gain such insights about a planet over 100 million kilometers away from us, especially considering this took place in the 1980s. However, the more we learned about Venus, the clearer it became that it's highly unlikely to support life as we know it. Venus's atmosphere is nearly 100 times denser than Earth's, and its surface experiences scorching temperatures. Far from being a serene tropical paradise, Venus presents a formidable image with its retrograde rotation and its lack of oceans or bodies of water like those on our blue planet. Yet our exploration of Venus isn't finished. Russia's space agency, Roscosmos, is currently working on a new mission to Venus called Venera D, scheduled for launch in 2029. This ambitious mission includes an orbiter and a lander, and aims to lay the groundwork for future Venus missions. In 2020, a surprising announcement was made by scientists from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They detected phosphine gas in Venus's atmosphere, a gas that could potentially indicate the presence of life. Interestingly, this revelation could find support in data from a NASA mission over four decades ago, the Pioneer Venus Multi-Probe Mission of 1978. The mission deployed probes into Venus's atmosphere, one of which, equipped with the Large Probe Neutral Mass Spectrometer, analyzed molecules in the atmosphere. While the LNMS was primarily used to identify known molecules, it suggested that it might have detected more, including phosphine. Recently, Rakesh Mogul, a professor, revisited the LNMS data from 40 years ago. His team believes they've identified evidence suggesting the presence of phosphine. This adds to the intrigue of ongoing research into Venus. Mogul proposes an intriguing theory. He believes the original mission scientists might have missed detecting phosphine while focusing on analyzing Venus's atmosphere for more common elements. He also speculates about intentional secrecy around this data, potentially to gain a strategic advantage in the broader field of space exploration. However, the situation is complex. Not everyone in the scientific community is convinced that the LNMS was sensitive enough to detect phosphine's presence. Nonetheless, this investigation continues to shed light on Venus's mysteries and sparks further exploration into its potential secrets. Mikhail Zolotov, a planetary scientist from Arizona State University, is suggesting an alternative viewpoint. He proposes that what the LNMS might have detected isn't necessarily phosphine alone, but rather a mixture of gases, rich in phosphorus, and hydrogen sulfide. If the LNMS did indeed identify phosphine, it could mean there's a much larger amount of this gas than what the MIT team initially found. This difference in findings is raising questions among the scientific community. Unfortunately, we can't currently verify these theories. The data from the Pioneer Venus multi-probe mission is securely stored as microfilm at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Right now, access to this archive is restricted, preventing anyone from delving into the potentially valuable information it holds. Dr. David Williams, who's currently in charge of the NASA Space Science Data Coordinated Archive, mentions they're working on gaining permission to digitize the microfilm. This step would allow a thorough analysis of the data without the need to handle the original physical records, prospects of redefining our cosmic existence. The discovery of phosphine has caused quite a buzz among scientists. This gas could potentially be produced by living organisms, sparking the exciting possibility of life on Venus. However, it's important to be cautious. This exciting revelation isn't definitive proof of extraterrestrial life on Venus, at least not yet. To confidently confirm the presence of phosphine on Venus, we need more data. This could be achieved by sending probes capable of directly detecting this gas, or by scrutinizing data from past missions to Venus. Gathering and analyzing more data systematically will allow scientists to confirm the presence of phosphine. Then, they can make a more informed judgment about whether this gas comes from living organisms or non-biological processes. Validating these findings is crucial. The idea of life on another planet is groundbreaking and could reshape our view of the universe. However, in the pursuit of such discoveries, ensuring data accuracy and reliability is equally important before making any major statements. This is why scientists are persistent in exploring Venus and its data.
They aim to confirm the presence of phosphine and uncover other potential signs of life. If successful, this could change the direction of space exploration, refocusing attention on Venus to uncover evidence that hints at a planet resembling a second Earth. Such a discovery could profoundly alter our perspective on our place in the universe and our approach to the quest for extraterrestrial life. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.